you you do make it a point and i think that this is this is interesting i know we've we've had the opportunity to talk uh with doug Tadapel, who's a close friend of yours you did some work together with him on audio mullet um which which by the way when are we getting more audio yeah, mullet? yeah absolutely when is that gonna gonna I need, we need to do research. another episode i think that once my kids get a little older i'll be able to get because we were doing it on weekends and it was causing a lot of problems because my youngest son is a handful my wife really needs my attention on the weekend help and it had just kept happening that like when I would do an episode of that, it would be at the worst moment. He would like destroy the house or something. Th- and then that's when Calvin. I finally, is... I just had to give it up uh, until you know Calvin's a little more in control. Yeah, <laughs> basically that, is what that, happened. That's when Calvin is covering Legos and his feces and spreading them all over your your upstairs exactly. room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've you've taken um, a lot of different elements in the book Brave Valley Possum and extrapolated them out to where not only is it. Uh, a moral lesson that you teach, but but talking about specifically your um, your relationship with Doug, one of the things you've said, um, I think you mentioned this in, in the episode you did of the Holy Smokes podcast with Steve Ryder, is you were talking about how Doug brings his faith to his comics in, in different and in unique ways and the way that mm-hmm. he, he expresses them. And you do that a little bit in Brave Ollie Possum because you talk about how Ollie is talking to God and praying to God, um, that he obviously has a, a relationship with God. He feels very free with that. And it is a book of really at the center of it, not only is it only overcoming his fear, but it's this restoration of relationship with his parents. Why was that something that you wanted to to put as a, what ends up being a very central theme of the book? And why do you think that's an important thing in, in a children's story? I think, uh, you know, it's really about his relationship with his dad. And I think something I learned about my dad who always loved us and, uh, he always, you know, he, he wanted to be a good dad, but he believed he was not a good dad. He believed that we were better off without him. And so he would sort of run away. And uh, it was only through the woman that he ended up marrying uh, who really kind of re- restored him in a lot of ways. And he, he had kids, and I ended up, that's how I ended up with my little brother Malachi, who's 24, year, 24 years younger than I am. Um, but he wasn't abusive, but there was, and he wasn't mean. But because of his own fear, he passed. I inherited his fear. He passed his uh, insecurities onto me, because he he didn't handle them himself. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, he he was appointed by God to be a father, to, and I was his son. And my other two brothers are his sons, and uh, he denied that call. And it cost not only him something, but it cost us something. Um, God's put people in my life to. You know, fill that hole and and be there for me. But it's it's a thing that I think. So in in the story, Brave Valley Possum, I really wanted to be, you know, the dad in that story. He's so focused on fixing the sinking ship that is their failing restaurant that he has abandoned his son, and he thinks uh, his he doesn't think that being a dad to his son is the important thing right now, or that that's not really his calling. So his, what it is is to fix this sinking ship, and. His son is feeling the loss of his father, and so I think that there is a there's a rightness in the world when your parents accept the responsibility and calling to be your parent. I think that every every human is meant to have somebody in their life that sees you as the center of their world in some way, as they're it's a child truly, and takes that position. Even though for all of us it's really transcendent to be that uh, and scary. Um, when you don't have that, it is a version of that lost, flailing feeling that you have when, uh, if you don't, if there's no God, if there's no meaning. 